In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of hybridization, which is sometimes also referred to and more commonly referred to as molecular orbital or MO theory. So what hybridization is, it's a theory that explains what we actually see in molecules based on their molecular geometries. So we'll talk about two examples and use those examples to explain why hybridization as a theory seems to, seems to work. So let's consider the molecule CH4, methane. If we drew the Lewis structure for methane, we would have carbon with four hydrogens bonded around this structure. And since we have um, four electron groups and no lone pairs, this would have a tetrahedral geometry with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. We've learned this from our knowledge of geometry. But why, what, what, what explains that? What theory about atomic orbitals actually explains that? Because if we use what we already know about atomic orbitals, it actually doesn't quite match up with what we see experimentally, this 109.5. So for example, if we talked about the atom carbon, and we wanted to draw the atomic orbital energy diagram, this thing on the right here, what would we draw for carbon? Well, carbon has six electrons, so its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So if we drew that on an orbital diagram like this, we would have two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s, and then one electron in each of those first two p orbitals. That would give us a total of six. So what we see based on this diagram is we only have two unpaired electrons. Two unpaired electrons means that this atom of carbon must only be able to form two bonds maximum. But the problem is the molecule, if it can only form two bonds, that would be carbon and two hydrogens, this molecule is incredibly unstable. It doesn't form. It doesn't exist. The most stable form of carbon, a hydrocarbon with only one carbon atom is CH4. But the problem is this theory here doesn't allow that to exist because there's only two unpaired electrons. So something must be going on that with the atomic orbitals here that allows this atom of carbon to form four bonds. What is that thing that is going on? Well that thing is this theory of hybridization and the formation of hybrid orbitals. So the term hybrid means a, a mixture, like a hybrid car is a mixture of an engine that works with gasoline, fossil fuels, and electricity. Hybrid orbitals are mixtures of orbitals. More specifically, definition to know, they are atomic orbitals that are formed when more than two non-equivalent atomic orbitals combine. And when I say non-equivalent, what non-equivalent means is atomic orbitals that are not equal in energy. So hybrid orbitals forms when we form when we take atomic orbitals that are not at the same energy level and mix them together to make new hybrid orbitals. So what does that look like for methane? Well, let's take our example again over here. Okay. Here we'll do CH4, the compound methane. We know electron has six electrons, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. What atomic orbital theory describes, okay, if we draw this same diagram to the right, and I'm going to try to line up this 1s with the 1s here to show that they're at equivalent energies. The 1s orbital, nothing is happening. Those electrons are too close to the nucleus to participate in any bonding. However, these orbitals here are not equivalent in energy, and they are going to hybridize. They're going to mix together in order to help explain what we actually see with CH4. 
Well, we're going to end up forming our four new orbitals that are that their energy level is in between that of the 2p and the 2s. So we're going to have one, two, three, four orbitals right here. What we can see is the energy level is slightly above where the 2s orbital was and below the 2p orbital. So these new hybrid orbitals right here are formed by mixing the 2s and the 2p's. So one thing to note when we form hybrid orbitals, you can only make the same number of hybrid orbitals as the number of orbitals you started with. So we started with a 2s and 3p orbitals, so that's a total of 4, so we make 4 hybrid orbitals. These orbitals have a special name. They are called the sp3 hybrid orbitals. How do I know that it's sp3? Well, that's just what scientists decided for nomenclature for calling them. But a way to remember it is think about this notation tells you what they're made out of. Think about the exponents here. The exponent for s, it's not written, so it's a 1. And for p, it's a 3. So what this kind of tells us is these four orbitals here are formed out of one s orbital, not the one s, but one s orbital, and three p orbitals. So the total of these exponents equals the total number of orbitals I can make. And they come from three p orbitals and one s one. So now if we added those six electrons for methane in, we have the two first here, it'd be three, four, five, six. What we see now is we have four unpaired electrons that allow us to support the fact that carbon forms four equal bonds to hydrogen in methane. Each one of these bonds is equivalent in energy. This theory right here, that the fact that these sp3 orbitals are formed as hybrids, allows us to explain why this structure is super stable, therefore why it has tetrahedral geometry, and why it has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. So what do these orbitals actually look like? Well, remember, atomic orbitals are regions. Remember, each of these is a region where there's a 90% likelihood or chance of finding an electron. So what we did before is we took the s orbital and we took 3p orbitals to form the hybrid sp3 orbitals. So what do they look like? What we can see here is they kind of look like a mixture between the s orbitals and the p orbitals. s is just a sphere. The p orbitals are this dumbbell shape on different axes. And as we can see here, you know, here's one of the sp3 orbitals, hybrid orbitals. It kind of has a sphere, but it's also kind of a dumbbell. Here's another one going on a different axis. Here's a third going on another axis. And here's a fourth going on another axis. So this is kind of what they look like as shapes. And therefore, we know, according to Vesper theory, they're going to try to get as far away from each other as possible because electrons repel. And the most stable molecule that forms with these bonds is a tetrahedral molecule. Whew, that's a lot. Let's look at another example to try to clarify this. But what about NH3? So if we have the molecule NH3, okay, the Lewis structure for NH3 looks like this. Nitrogen with one lone pair and three hydrogen bonds. The central atom is nitrogen. Nitrogen has a total of seven electrons. So if we drew seven electrons, if we put them onto this atomic orbital energy diagram, nitrogen would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay? But this is great. It kind of shows us that we have three electrons in the p orbitals that can form three bonds. But we have these orbitals in the 2s here that are at a different energy and don't kind of represent what we actually see in the diagram. NH3, we also know has a trigonal pyramidal geometry. 
with four electron groups and one lone pair that are equivalent in energy. These are clearly not equivalent in energy. So what must be forming are hybrid orbitals again. The 1s is untouched because those electrons aren't involved. These are going to hybridize into four sp3 hybrid orbitals again. So if we added our seven electrons, we'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now what we can see from this hybridization is that we have three unpaired electrons. So three unpaired electrons, which account for the three bonds to hydrogen, one, two, three. And we also have this sp3 orbital filled with two electrons. Ooh, does that explain what we see in the Lewis structure? Yep. We have that lone pair of electrons that can't and is not participating in any bonding whatsoever. These are sp3 hybrid orbitals. This video allows us to try to understand where they come from. In reality, what we need to know is if you know the geometry of a molecule, you need to be able to tell me what the hybridization is. Here's another diagram that shows the same thing for NH3. The s orbitals and the p orbitals hybridizing, mixing, to form the new sp3 hybrid orbitals, where this represents the lone pair that we would see in the molecule. What we're going to add to our chart in class tomorrow, or you can add now, our molecular geometry chart. Depending on the number of electron groups, we always are going to know the hybridization. If a molecule has two electron groups all the way down through six, we know the hybridization right away. We just talked about two examples that had four electron groups. They were sp, oops, those look like they're uh, uppercase and lowercase, it's not true. They're all lowercase sp3 hybridization. If you have three electron groups in the molecule, you have sp2 hybridization. If you have two electron groups, you have sp hybridization. Five is sp3d and six is sp3d2. So we'll add those to our chart tomorrow and we'll be good to go with practice.